Hey, what's good everybody? Welcome to the next episode of my Bitwig review. Today we're going to be looking at phase four. This is a super interesting plugin and the key differences between like the phase modulation and frequency modulation is that they pretty much achieve the same things. It's just that they go about it in a different way. Generally phase modulation is like when you're making an operator from what I've read as opposed to having an operator, which is what frequency modulation comes off of. But that stuff isn't really important. The thing that you need to know is how to work this darn thing. In essence, we generally have have a lot of the same features that you might see in FM4 other than you might notice that the matrix is gone. Instead we have this little table right here and this is pretty much just the feedback that we can send from the red, blue, yellow, and magenta oscillators or operators however you want to cut that cookie into itself. So I'm going to just cover one of these and then you'll be able to see. Then we have an interesting filter section in the next white pad that we'll talk about just now. And by the way like this patch that I made is not really what I want to highlight but it's just kind of funny um, as like a little wonky thing. What we'll start from scratch here but just listen to this it's kind of silly it's like a um it's like a little car or something <laughs> usually i make a base or something but anyways let's go ahead and open up a new instance of phase four and we'll talk about some of the interesting things so just like FM4, we have a really awesome oscilloscope that we can use to pretty much watch all of these and kind of figure out what's happening. And so a more in-depth or more precise explanation of this is when you take a single oscillator and you look at the output over here on the right. Right now this is just a sign, but you notice that this is kind of floating. So instead of having this modulation to it, we want it to stay stagnant. And as we start to introduce another operator into it with some noise, then you'll start to see here in just a sec that this is going to change pretty drastically. Let's give it some drive. Feed it back into itself, you can get some of that stuff. Now I know I just made that super quick and I didn't really explain what I just did, but don't worry about that. I'll kind of start over and kind of show you. But honestly, it's really that easy to just get the sound started from off the bat if you just kind of want to hop in, which I encourage you guys to do at some point. So what's actually happening? Well, right now on the oscillator red, that's kind of our main one that we're using. And what we're doing is we have a few different oscillators to choose from. This one's under a saw and we can go all the way over to a sine. And then we have this shape and modulation. Shape is kind of like wave shaping in a sense. And then when you modulate it with this, then that kind of goes into this table here. Because I believe that if we turn this off, even with the modulation on, if we don't shape it, then you're not going to get very much different stuff. So as far as like pitch goes, we have ratios on this one, which we can go into uh, anywhere from a two to one all the way to one to 99. And then we also have a pitch difference right here and also a Hertz fine tuning. And actually like, even though I'm kind of skimming over this, it's actually really important. I'll show you why here in a second. Aside from that, we also have a mono and stereo band. So if you want to introduce some kind of phasing and stuff, that's a cool way to think about that. And one of the things here that's interesting with all this stuff is that we can rotate the phase of this and you can do that on every oscillator and while you might be thinking well why would I want to do that if we have two different things that are playing at the same time and we shift the phase of these let me get off of that for a second sorry let's give this an output so now these two are playing at the same time of this and take a look Now the differences are subtle, but you can see that it starts to change the sound ever so slightly, and that's because we're shifting the phase of the sound. And so you want to be mindful whenever you're trying to make this kind of stuff because it can be useful or advantageous in order to place certain frequency shapes along the phase of our of our line, which can be like a really like crazy thing to think about, but like don't overcomplicate it. Just know that that's kind of essentially what it is that we're doing. So the whole premise of this is that basically we want to take these four things, uh, these four oscillators and kind of mix and match them in between to create some interesting sound. Before I go on, if you look over here in the filter section, you want to be mindful of the drive because if the drive is at absolutely zero, you're not going to get any sound. And this is kind of a strange like pre overall amplitude with the filter and I think that honestly the filter is the most complicated thing above all of these. That's also really fun and really cool if you kind of get something going with it. As you can see you can feed 
feedback into itself with all of these oscillators to create some interesting sounds. I think that we need to give that a little bit and then this as well. And then everything kind of feeds into this. It even has its own like feedback section which it doesn't make that big of a difference, but if you look up here, you can actually see that it does change the sound ever so slightly. And the more stuff that you do to this when you're adding harmonics, the more that you can get away with. So aside from there, we have our seven filter types across the board. This is also our resonance. And as you can tell, this is a really excellent way to make bass. Then over here on the right, we have key tracking in case if you want this to key track as you play lower or higher notes. Or you can just automate like that, which sounds pretty cool too. And then aside from that, we also have our filter envelope generator amounts. And what that basically is, is right here on our filter envelope generator, you notice that it's in green. And whenever you have something that's green, that means that you can do things with it. And so basically, if I push on either the filter envelope generator or the amplitude envelope generator, we can map these parameters to whatever it is that we want. And that's kind of how I got that funny car noise is because I automated the pitch with this. But if you do something practical, Let's say maybe something like this and maybe something like that just for sake of demonstration and you turn this up. It's bipolar so it can go in both ways. And as you can tell, you can get some super interesting results. So over here on the left, this is one of the most fun things that you can mess with because it's an XY pad, but it controls the filter and modulation of the shape here. And basically, if you think about this, this can control this either on this pad or on this pad, but really you can just grab this little four thing right here and then drag that in between on XY. And if you want to do some kind of live performance with it, then there's a lot of our opportunity for play there. It's changing over time because we still have the filter envelope on there or the FEG, so to speak. So yeah, that's a really fun thing. You can also take individual ones if you want over here and mess with it this way, but I find it more fun to just either do bow, do these two, or to drag this around. With the pitch, it's the global tuning, and then this is also the same standard features of Legato, but really that's kind of what phase four does. And together, when you do some stuff, as you saw, it's a really easy and excellent way to make some interesting bass. It's also kind of cool that you have these other things here to kind of fine tune if you want to see this visual. But the last thing that I want to talk about is the difference between pitch detuning and hertz detuning, because it's going to give you a similar result, but it's going to behave different. And so what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm going to turn both of these off and just leave these two on. And so if I have detuning, which is notified by the keyboard, I wish I could zoom in on here, and I start to detune one of this, take a listen to how this sounds. Let's also remove, let's also remove all that. There we go. Okay, now let's detune this a little bit. And hopefully you can tell like how you can see that that's detuning. And when I play this at a higher pitch, it should have phase oscillation at a higher rate. And you can kind of see that through both this, this, and this, that it's basically behaving in, in a similar fashion. Now, the difference though, is that if I were to detune on the Hertz, have you noticed that we have a different image on our stereo? And so, it's, it's fine too if we leave it at that or like that, it doesn't really matter. But, but what ends up happening is that this is kind of playing back at a consistent rate. And so even if I play a different pitch, these are both going to oscillate at the same speed compared to if I were to do detuning. And so that's just a fun little experiment that I wanted to kind of bring to attention to you guys because while they do achieve very similar results, they behave in slightly different ways. But that's part of the fun with figuring some of these things out with phase four. I had a lot of fun making this video, so I hope that you guys have just as much fun messing with this as I did. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and next video we'll be looking at the super simple but very powerful potentially organ synth. See you guys later.